Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle. I work with Brad Quima, Quima, Quima Varlick, and seeing some mixed trade in both corn and livestock futures here in the early portion of the session. And Brad, the cattle market, a down day yesterday, was that profit taking? And did we do any technical damage? And are we erasing that with the rally that we're seeing today? Got a great start here, Michelle. Uh, thanks for having me on. It was fun to see you down in Orlando again. Um, thanks for uh, taking a little time to. to my very shaky interview with you. You remember that? So yeah, whatever. It wasn't shaky. Not at all. Not at all. So overbought very much. So particularly feeder cattle, um, uh, overdue for probably a correction here. Yes. Now we did, you know, so I got back here yesterday and then did a little bit of uh, catching up work. Um, you look at like a June cattle chart, for instance, I'm just going to bring that up. And basically I'm friendly to the market, but I, I want to, you know, at least give uh, the devil it's due here a little bit. Uh, June cattle rallied to basically 62% retracement of the whole move down uh, into an area where there was a gap left on the chart um, and uh, had an outside day reversal down. So you can't just sit there and, and, and go like, well, oh, I don't care about that, you know, um, because that is a technical signal now. Having said that, uh, I think yesterday is more about what you said at the beginning of the sentence, and that is that we were so overbought that we were due for a down day. Uh, today's action thus far is very encouraging with the forward spreads working great. Uh, you know, started out right back, you know, trying to erase the losses of yesterday. Um, Feb cattle up $1.50. Uh, you know, everything acts pretty salty here. And I always like when the feeder cattle show strength and they're showing nice strength too to get started here this morning. Yeah, no doubt. You and I, when we were at NCBA convention, obviously the cattle inventory report came out at that point and certainly some bullish optimism about numbers tightening and where we go with prices from here. In your, I guess, analysis post the report, how do you feel about it? Well, first, I apologize that I wasn't able to be more in depth with that interview because the, those reports, I get a bang out of those reports. I, that, that's. I've been looking forward to that report for a month or more, um, and and uh, because it's it's nice to drill down really, and and now that I've had a little more opportunity to do that, um, you know, I think everybody everybody's heard that the smallest calf crop since 1951, the smallest cow herd since in the 60s, right? Uh, but to dig even deeper a little bit here, I, I don't know if everybody understands that the number of cattle, according to this report, the number of cattle available to be placed outside of feed yards, in other words, cattle that are still out there that we're gonna compete with each other to buy, one million head less than a year ago. One million head less of calves available outside of feed yards. I don't know about you, but I put that into context when we're killing 125,000 a day. I mean, that, that's a, that's a chunk of supply. Um, you know, so people go like, boy, don't you think these feeder cattle are off a high at a sale barn? I'm going like, yeah. Uh, and I am not surprised why, unfortunately, I mean, this is kind of the fundamental, this is the deck, the fundamental deck that we've been dealt. And that's going to be like this here for a while. They're not going to fix this deal because we haven't even started to hold heifers. Obviously is the other conclusive thing that comes out of that uh, report. So that kind of tees into my next question about this feeder market, because it has been, the cash market has been on fire, hasn't it? Well described. On fire would be the way I use, words I would use as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm a cattle feeder. Okay. So, you know, put me under the bus too. We're our own worst enemy. Sometimes we get enthused. We get done making, maybe I've made some nice money here last year and, and, and we can't wait to spend it at the sale barn. Um, but, you know, Clearly, you know, you look at the whole structure of the market, I, next Feb cattle are over 191. Uh, you know, there is some enthusiasm here for what is a very real fundamental situation. And that is that you're going into a shrinking cow herd, which is a shrinking cow supply. Um, and that's a couple year phenomenon. So I, you know, I mean, be careful, uh, use your head here, um, you know, use some risk management ideas here. Uh, but I'm afraid this high price feeder cattle, unless something really changes on cost of feed, or if there's some sort of black swan, which we surely don't need another one of them. Um, you know, I'm afraid we're going to have to get used to these, these higher feeder cattle prices for quite some time. Yeah, and it's going to squeeze margins here, obviously. So got to be careful of that. Uh, let's go back and talk about cash market expectations for this week. We were up over $2 on the weighted average last week. How short are the Packers? How close to the knife are they? Well, I think there's a kind of a regional issue maybe with the Packers, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I don't think there's any tightness of supply in Texas. I, I'm not, I don't mean to make it sound like there's an overly big burdensome supply either, but there's enough. 
Um, and there's probably enough in Kansas for that matter to show this. There are a little bigger this week now in the north. Uh, I think things are a little different. Uh, and I think that the perception that we have these big glut of cattle in the first quarter of the year in the north, I think, is wrong. Um, uh, I think the weather has uh, taken a ton of weight off. Uh, last week, we saw a couple of classes of those cattle that actually have the weights at or below a year ago. Um, and, and that's largely due to the feedlot conditions here in the north Nebraska, even all the way down into Kansas from visiting with some of those guys last week uh, at convention. So <clears throat> I'm anxious to see Thursday's report again. I would not be at all surprised to see the weights come off another chunk that would be normal now too uh seasonally the basis or excuse me seasonally the weights do come down this time of year for sure yeah i was hearing the same thing at convention a lot of uh tough weather okay hog market i think we're down like the fourth out of the last five days or pretty close to that uh we took out some support areas this morning it looks like already on the chart so how much more of a correction do you think we're going to see here disclaimer Hogs are really hard for me to be very analytical with. Um, and so <clears throat> the run-up is what surprised me, uh, the, the, the extent it was. Um, I think it was uh, probably uh, complemented by a time where the, the funds were a big time short and, and right. came falling all over themselves like chasing a pig through a gate, right? I mean, when they all want to go at the same time. Um, and, and, you know, unfortunately, the fundamentals, I never felt really were terribly supportive for the rally. And I guess I'm afraid I still don't feel that way. Um, felt like we were backed up a little bit before the weather and we certainly aren't done anything to fix that now. So um, I guess, you know, asking maybe we retest this breakout area. And then I guess if that you're know, wondering where that is, that's at 77 and a half to 78 level in April. Uh, which is another three, four dollar, three dollars or so down from where it is. Um, you know, someplace back in that halfway back of this big move, it seems to me like someplace back in that area would make a lot of sense to me. If I was a hog hedger, though, I would, I would be, I would be a, maybe a little more proactive here and, and and maybe using some of the strength to do a little bit of management. I wonder if we didn't get some hedge pressure, especially in those summer months there when we got you know above ninety dollars even on some of those back summer months. Start approaching um, 100 bucks again, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So maybe some hedge pressure there. All right, the grain market, we're mixed this morning, kind of quiet, but soybeans to the plus side, and we did kind of score a bit of a reversal yesterday. Um, you know, do you buy into this reversal? Can it hold? Can we get back above $12 here, especially going into the reports? I'd love to give you a concrete reason why we should just, you know, do that. I frankly, was surprised that we pulled it off yesterday. News was not great that we had that no, reversal up yesterday. Um, so far, so good with some follow through. Uh, you know, I'm afraid we need a technical reason here because the fundamental stuff probably doesn't support it. You've got generally non-threatening weather in South America. You've got a, a bean market, particularly that's not competitively priced in the world market. Ours are, ours are not anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't know. There's a report Thursday. I don't, usually, there's not many surprises on that February report, but I'll say that maybe there would be one finally. Um, we've got to get the market back above twelve for real, and and to 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 stop the bleeding here. Corn market. I guess I'm a little less negative on, but that doesn't mean I'm bullish either. I mean, it's the same market. Four forty. Yeah, we've been support, holding up for a while. Four, right, forever. Um, but we don't get away from it. Maybe we got to get no. some separation from it too. The market's absorbed some punches. You know, it's had some bad news here and hasn't gone lower. Um, you know, I mean, as an end user, I'm inclined to think maybe this is a spot I'd look to be thinking about that, you know, the long side of the market. Um, but I really don't think either one of these things goes very far anywhere until you get closer to our springtime. And then maybe we can put some kind of weather threat to it or something. But that's quite a ways away. It's just early February, of course. Yeah. Otherwise, like you said, we've been in a 10 cent trading range between 440 and we can't take 450 out. So we just kind of right. consolidate, don't we? Pretty boring. Reminds me of the uh, early 80s, you know, it's like oh, hard to think of anything really clever or entertaining to say about yeah. the corn market. All right. Well, at least it's not going down below 440. Right. So hopefully it'll hope. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Brad Crema with Crema Crema Varlick. That is Markets Now.